Now, this is uh, the fly I'm going to be tying. Basically what it is, is a, it's a duck fly pattern. Uh, an adult version. Um, basically, it's, it's a good style of fly. It's, it's ideal for um, the early season, especially this colour combination. And uh, the black midges coming off uh, an island, they call it duck fly. And uh, it's, a, it's a simple fly to tie, as I say. It's quite a good fun. And I'm tying a few for a box, so I thought I would obviously film it for you so you can see what it's like. Now, the hook choice I'm using in a it's called the Short Shank Special, this one. This is from Fuller Mill. And uh, Camasan do one called the B160. Now, what it is, the gapes are equivalent to a size 10, but the the shanks are equivalent to a size 12. So it's a, very, it's a very good, a versatile hook for many patterns. I mean, I've tied clink hammers, shuttlecocks, uh, obviously duck flies I'm going to be tying. And because of the, the wide gape, it gives you that midge-like or uh, curved look even though it doesn't look it there, but when you tie the fly you'll see how it works out. So anyway, we'll get into we'll tie the fly. Now, the thread I'm going to be using is the Uni Thread 8O in black. And the first thing, just run your wax through, get it started. Makes it nice and gives you plenty of grip. So we start at the eye, up to this point here, I'm going to tie in some silver wire. Just a, a small silver wire. Uh, it's easier to tie it in the way down. Uh, you use it as a as a guide for your thread turns. I'm also going to tie in some. This is a Glowbrite floss. This is number four, which is the fluorescent red. Now I've got a length of it lying here. Now what I like to do is just run the wax through it. I use this as part of the rub as well. So you tidy the end up. Wind them both together. And we just come round the bend to get some more grub shape. And then I'm going to bring the thread turn up about maybe three to four turns. Because what happens if you put a wee bit, just come up with the black thread first, it helps to taper the body a bit better. Now we're going to get some dyed black pheasant tail fibre. Tear off about half a dozen fibres. Now when you tear it off, make sure the tips have lined up. So we then we catch it close to the butts, or the, the thick end, but pull it into the tips. So we pull it right in, to there. And then we wind up. Now we wind up till we're in line with the point of the hook. To we thread up to this point. So basically when we let the thread go, it should be in line, close to the line, the point of the hook. Now, the pheasant tail fibre is the weakest. Now what's going to protect this is the, is the wire, and obviously the floss. So, to get the best of that, and to see it better, we'll wind the pheasant tail towards myself. So basically we're going to cross rib it on the way up with the rib. So we just work our way up, forming some sort of taper into the body, because it will naturally taper anyway, because the fibre gets thicker. Then we tie it off. Now because we're wound towards myself, we have to lock in this turn, so we come over with a turn onto the pheasant tail and then we do a turn on the hook. That locks that turn in. Do the same again, and again, and then we can trim away. And then what we want to do is, I like to come round, you can come round with a turn or two of the floss at the back first, onto the hook, it's actually basically onto the bare hook. And then what I like to do then is wind the, the floss round the wire. Just take your time in doing this. Come round it, I don't know many, maybe six or seven times at least. You can twirl it with your fingers, you can bring it round like this, twist it in, and then wind it up. Obviously you're mixing the colour, the silver and the red, which is good. But at the same time it highlights the red and it doesn't doesn't disappear as much. Now it's done. I need another couple of turns here. I want it to be mixed. The highlights are red, but being on the silver wire. There we go. So, I mean, if you wound the floss straight onto the black, it practically disappears. But if you wind it onto the wire, it highlights it a bit better. Now I'm going to bend and break away the wire. Cut off the floss. But what I'm going to do here is just for this, 
it's quite easier to do this to get a neater finish by taking your black thread off by wet finishing. Go to your, as you see, I put this on to a bobbin holder, the, the floss, which I'm going to put back on here just to highlight the thorax area. Just come up and down two or three times, and then we can wet finish. Just one, two, three. There we are. Now you could put some resin on that to protect it, but it's fine the way it is. So I'm going to go back in with the thread. Going to come up. Put wax on my thread again, just to give me a grip. It's fine, this looks okay. Now I'm going to put a thorax cover on it. The thorax cover, now it could be the pheasant tail if you want, but I'm going to use the Opal Mirage. This, this is a large. And the smaller flies you'll need the, the medium size, but in this size, the large is fine. So I'm going to catch this on top. Two or three turns. And then I make sure it's well tied in. And then I'm going to tie in the, the wings. Now the wings are two small feathers from this cock, this grizzle neck. There's lots of wee or small grizzle feathers down there, which obviously you can use for dry flies, but you can use them for the, the wings, especially uh, flies like this, like the adult midge. So I've taken two off. Now what I do is I just lay on top of one another. And make sure that they tie it there, they've lined up. And then I tie it so the wings are just at the back, the tips are at the back of the hook. So then I just come in and hold it. Two or three turns. Just check my length before we go any further. Just make sure that's fine. That's the length I'm looking for. Then we can trim away. Make sure they're tied in. And then we're going to get some dubbing. Now what's going to split the wing is the obviously the thorax cover. Now what we're looking for is some black. You can use the thread if you want, if it's just a black thread. Uh, or I'm going to put some, in this case some black, dyed black seals for. You could use SLF or whatever dubbing you have. Hold up the thorax with it. Just check where we are. Tighten the, th the dubbing when we need to. Make sure you've got plenty of space at the front here for your hackle. Now, I'm fine with that. Now, what I want to do is encourage the wing bud, the wings, sorry, hackle points to separate slightly. We can come over the top. Just going to show you this in a minute. So we've got our wings. I'm just making sure I've got some fibre as well because you get a nice fibre on it. So we are. Let me catch the thorax cover in. A couple of turns or so, fold it back. Make a nice base of thread down for your hackle. There we are. Just that's all you need is an impression of the wing. You don't need much. Now you could use a hen hackle or a cock hackle. Uh, these are Chinese, so they're quite they're quite a soft fibre, and I like using these up. I use them in other flies as well, but hen hackles are good, obviously. So I've just cleared away the fluff at the base and revealed the stem to tie it in. Now you're only looking for a couple of turns. I'm just going to fold the hackle. Even a turn's enough times. Happy with that. I'm going to catch in the hackle. Now I'll get another flag out of that one. I'm just going to have a couple of turns and I'm going to fold it back and then form a head with the thread. Just ignoring everything just now. We can then. Straight in and wet finish. 
I'm going to show you the head because it has a midge and I've got very pronounced thorax so now you can cut this away or you can just break it off. I just, most times I just break it off. And there we are. And that's your adult midge, duck fly pattern. And then we just simply finish it off with a coat of varnish. Just apply the varnish whatever way you like. It could be a needle or you can do what I do, a tapered brush. That This is just a brush that comes with a bottle from vineyards, I just basically cut it with a Stanley blade to so get a nice taper on it and uh, I can apply it no, no varnish in the eye there and it's fine so anyway, there we are that's your, your duck fly pattern it's a good fly so if you're fishing a set of midge you can put this in the, the top middle it's a good position for it uh, with a sort of quilt buzzer or something in the point so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and if you enjoy the videos, um, please subscribe, and thank you for watching.